These test stands, located in the desert of Southern California, are where the Air Force Research Laboratory tests rocket engines and rocket propulsion technology. From the earliest days of the United States push into space, these facilities have stood on the cutting edge of launching America's rocket booster. And today, the Air Force is developing what could prove to be another revolution in rocket engine design and manufacturing. The program is called the Affordable Responsive Modular Rocket. And this is AFRL Tech. So ARMOR stands for the Affordable Responsive Modular Rocket. ARMOR is really interesting because what it proposes to do is change up how we develop liquid rocket engines. Most launch vehicles, if they're trying to put something into orbit, into space, we have the boost stage and then we have an upper stage, right? Traditionally, as of now, when we have a vehicle that has both a boost stage and an upper stage, those engines are different. They're completely different. They have two diff completely different development life cycles. Um, use, they sometimes may use some common hardware between the two, but for the most part, they're different to an extreme amount, right? So what we propose with Armor, we can take the same hardware that we're using in the boost stage engine and actually apply it to the upper stage engine. So that reduces the development or the parallel development paths that you might need when developing new engines. And you can actually even custom tailor for both the boost stage and the upper stage, making sure that it works in both applications. Armor platform uses the Aerospike engine configuration because it just helps enable that modularity. Traditional bell-shaped rocket engines are designed for efficiency at specific altitudes. The ambient air pressure at any given altitude is taken into account when designing a rocket engine bell. In an aerospike design, the engine bell is turned inside out with the ambient pressure acting as one side of the engine bell. This serves as an altitude compensator, yielding an engine that maintains optimum performance across all altitudes. So that reduces the development or the parallel development paths that you might need when developing new engines or developing a new vehicle architecture, whatever it may be. We are using a lot of modern, like advanced manufacturing processes and practices to make it happen, to realize it. Additive manufacturing right now, we can print within build volumes up to about to say a cubic foot, right, one by one by one feet, right? And within that, we can potentially build and print one of these smaller engine chambers. And we can take that one engine, smaller engine chamber, put it on a, like a lab scale bench, bench, uh, bench test setup, right? And we can fully test it. And we're seeing full scale conditions, right? Because for me to actually test this, right? It requires me to set up a huge test facility, all the propellants, or the liquid oxygen or the rocket fuel that I need to put into this can cost me a lot of money. Whereas if I take a thruster from here, so specifically one of these small, one of these small guys out here on the perimeter, I can take this, test it on a bench, on a bench scale, and it will cost me a whole lot less money. What we're trying to do with Armour is really accelerate the development timeline and reduce the cost to developing a new engine. This research is already showing concrete potential. AFRL has recently contracted for a demonstration launch vehicle named Arise that will prove the many advantages of this design approach. The nation's space program flies on technology developed by AFRL, and Armor is continuing this rich heritage of rocket engine advancement.